Hello and welcome to another video where today I'll be running through advanced variances as part of standard costing and within this session I'll be focusing specifically on labour variances. Firstly, a quick reminder of what standard costing actually is. A standard cost for a product or service is a predetermined cost per unit set under specific working criteria. The idea behind using standard costing is that it gives the business greater control by being able to compare the actual cost of producing products to the standard cost. This also ties in with budgeting because by having a standard cost of producing one product, it easily allows the business to scale this up or down depending on how many units it plans to produce. This then has the potential to allow for budget managers to be assessed clearly between the actual and standard costs as part of a performance review. As you can probably guess from the above, standard costing is more suitable for businesses producing a high number of identical or at least very similar products or provide a standardized service than it would be where the product or service is tailored specifically to each customer. Let's have a look specifically then at the labor variances. When a business calculates its labor variances, it will split them into two separate variances, the labor rate variance and the labor efficiency variance. If we were to add the two together, it would equal the total labor variance. Let's now take a look at each of these in more detail. We'll start off by looking at the labor rate variance. And the question that's been asked when calculating the rate variance is, did each unit of labor, usually hours, cost more or less than what was budgeted? If each labor hour costs less than what the business expected, then they will have a favorable rate variance. And if it costs more than the standard rate, then there will be an adverse rate variance. To calculate the labor rate variance, we need to multiply the actual labor hours used by the standard cost per hour. This will give us how much the labor hours worked should have cost the business. We then compare this to how much the business actually paid for the labor with the difference between the two being our labor rate variance. Let's put this into an example. In the table on screen now, we can see the budgeted and actual units produced by a business along with the labor hours used and the cost of those hours. To calculate the labor rate variance, we first need to calculate the standard cost per hour. To do this then, it would be the cost of £46,875 divided by 3,750 hours to give us a cost per hour of £12.50. From here, we can multiply the standard cost per hour by the actual labour hours used of 4,240 to give us £53,000. This is the standard cost of labour hours actually worked and we can now compare between this figure and the actual cost of those labour hours to give us our rate variance. This would therefore be £55,968 less £53,000 to give us a labour rate variance of £2,968. And as the business has spent more than expected, this would mean that the variance is adverse. Now moving on to the labour efficiency variance, which is measuring whether the business used more or less hours than expected to produce the number of units they did. Let's take a look at our previous example and calculate the labour efficiency variance. First, we need to determine the standard amount of labour hours used to produce one unit. This would be calculated by dividing the budgeted labour used of 3,750 hours by the budgeted production units of 5,000. The standard time to produce one unit is therefore 0.75 of an hour, i.e. 45 minutes. We then apply this to the actual production. We actually produce 5,300 units, so if we multiply this by our expected hours per unit of 0.75, this gives us the amount in labour hours which should have been used, which in this case would therefore be 3,975. The next step is to compare this to the actual hours used of 4,240. 
and we can now calculate the difference between the two, which gives us 265 hours. So what we're saying here is that we've used 265 hours more than what was expected for this number of units. The last step is to convert this to a monetary value. We do this by multiplying the 265 hours by the standard cost per hour calculated during the rate variance, which is £12.50. This gives us a labour efficiency variance of £3,312.50. And because we use more labour hours than expected for the number of units produced, this would mean that it's adverse. The labour rate variance and labour efficiency variance should add back together to come to the overall labour variance, had we just flexed the cost of labour from the budgeted amount of units to the actual amount of units. Our final check then is to make sure the numbers reconcile. Firstly, let's flex the labour cost. This would be 46,875 divided by 5,000 units, and then multiplied by the actual number of units produced of 5,300, which gives us £49,687.50. The actual cost of labour for those units was £55,968, giving us a total labour variance of £6,280.50. And because it was more than what the business expected to pay, this would be adverse. Let's now reconcile this with the rate and efficiency variances. The labour rate variance was £2,968 adverse, plus the labour efficiency variance of £3,312.50 adverse, gives us our total labour variance of £6,280.50 adverse. So we can see from this that the figures reconcile. To finalise, we need to look at the possible causes of labour variances. And again, these can be split between rate variances and efficiency variances. But do be aware that the two can often be linked. Some of the common reasons for labour rate variances are as follows. It could be higher or lower skilled staff, an increase or decrease in overtime, or a wages increase. Then some of the common reasons for labour efficiency variances could include, again, higher or lower skilled staff, or an increase or decrease in motivation. And that wraps up this video on advanced labour variances. Hope you found it useful, and if so, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.